Today we're taking a look at Generation Zero. This game has been around for a few years, but we're going to find out if it's still worth playing in 2024. So, let's dive in. Generation Zero is set in Sweden during the 1980s. You play as a character from one of several 1980s archetypes, punk, jock, nerd, and so on. Your main goals are to figure out why everyone is missing, find survivors, and uncover the truth behind a robot invasion. The game doesn't push you down a specific path. Instead, you can make your own goals and explore at your own pace, either alone or with up to three friends. The world of Generation Zero is filled with different locations like towns, farms, bunkers, and even a military base. As you explore, you'll find robots to fight and loot to collect. Sometimes, you'll come across missions that usually involve finding a place and looting it. What's cool is that there are no objective markers on the map. You have to read clues and interact with the environment to figure out where to go. For example, an abandoned car facing a certain direction might hint at something worth checking out nearby. The main gameplay loop in Generation Zero involves walking from place to place, fighting robots and collecting loot. Occasionally, you'll find audio logs or documents that add to the story. Most of the time though, it's just you. The atmospheric synth music, the wind in the trees, and the eerie screech of robots spotting you. The game can feel pretty minimal, almost like an early access title, but there's something compelling about its simplicity. The world is beautifully designed, with a striking contrast between the sci-fi robots and the peaceful Scandinavian scenery. Fans of Simon Stollenhag's artwork will appreciate the visuals. The weather and day, night cycle change constantly, making the atmosphere dynamic. You'll experience everything from golden sunsets to intense lightning storms at midnight. As you explore, you'll come across forests, coastlines, villages, and farmlands, all of which are patrolled by menacing robots. Speaking of robots, let's talk about the enemies you'll face. Some robots are small and fast, while others are huge and armed with rockets. There are six types of robots, each with unique weapons, behaviors, and weaknesses. The Hunter is one of the scariest a giant robot with a blade on one arm and a cannon on the other. You can fight most robots alone, but for bigger enemies like the tank, you'll need to team up with friends. Playing alone, Generation Zero feels very tense and almost like a stealth game. You'll often find yourself sneaking past enemies, hiding in trees, and using gadgets to distract them. You can throw flares, fireworks, and even boomboxes to lure robots away giving you a chance to slip by unnoticed. There's a unique thrill in picking a random direction, trekking across the map, avoiding patrols, and sneaking into villages to stock up on supplies and ammo. However, the game isn't perfect. The rich atmosphere can be ruined when you notice how many reused assets there are. Finding a new town or farm should be exciting, but they're all made up of the same few houses and barns. This repetitive design feels cheap and hurts the exploration aspect of the game. The small development team's limitations are understandable, but the repeated environments can get boring. Playing with friends can be more fun. You can be more aggressive, take on groups of robots, and come up with tactics together. For instance, one player can climb a church steeple with a sniper rifle, while another uses flares to lure enemies into the sniper's line of fire. Having friends to talk to also makes the long hikes across the map more enjoyable. However, the game's limited content and lack of deep systems can make even multiplayer feel dull after a while. It's hard to play for more than an hour at a time before boredom sets in. Now, let's talk about the newest content update for 2024. This update introduces the Vulture, a tough new endgame robot, a bonus weapon, and companion armor kits. These kits let you repair your companions while exploring or in combat, adding a new layer of strategy. So, is Generation Zero still worth playing in 2024? The game's atmosphere, unique setting, and minimalist storytelling can be very compelling. The new updates add some much-needed variety and challenges. However, the repetitive environments, limited content, and the fact that even multiplayer can feel aimless hold it back. If you love exploring a beautifully rendered, robot-infested and you don't mind a bit of repetitive gameplay, Generation Zero has its charms. The new content adds value, especially for returning players looking for a reason to dive back in. However, if you're looking for a game with deep systems and varied content, it might not hold your attention for long. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this review, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more gaming content. Let us know in the comments. Have you played Generation Zero? What did you think? Are you excited about the new updates? See you in the next video.